Hey everybody, this is Jamie with C4 Depot, and I'd like to do a walkthrough of EasyCloud 1.3. I think this is really a pretty amazing product. It's packed with value, and we put a lot of time and effort into it, and I think you'll really, really like it. It uses thinking particles, and it's got a completely new rig for the volumetric clouds. And so, when you open up the content browser, uh, the first two rows, is, these are all pretty much the new addition to EasyCloud 1.3 and everything from here on down is in the original versions of EasyCloud and one of the things that uh, we've added is an HDRI sky background I mean you gotta have a sky right so you might as well make it an HDRI and so we've included this from Real Sky Studio and this is a photographically based two-dimensional cloud plane and it's super high detail that's why this download was so huge is that this uh, cloud map which is made up of tiles it's infinite and it's very very fine detail so if you don't want to fly into the cloud this thing is completely realistic because they're real clouds okay uh, this is the ground fog and th we have this volumetric and these two uh, presets are different kinds of procedural noise planes that allow you to animate and morph clouds that are planar. They render extremely fast, very easy to use, no waiting time for those, so those are really handy. Um, we've got a cloud tunnel, and these are, are the two volumetric 3D cloud presets, which really pretty much consist of the you know, the core of EasyCloud 1.3. And this is the uh, volumetric cloud fly-through, which is different from the old one because this one required you to fly the camera over the clouds. This one allows the camera to be stationary and the clouds move past you and they morph and they animate, and that's a pretty cool rig. And it's got this um, stock photograph that uh, is part of our library. We shot this from a jet, so it's, you know, a realistic cloud background. And so let's just hop in and open up one of these presets. This is the scattered clouds, and I just wanted to show you how this uh, is set up. And I made a little adjustment at the end, and I forgot to turn the uh, cloud preview back on. So if you want to see what these clusters look like, um, just go into the cloud material, and you can turn on the preview, and you'll see the clusters preview right here. But the way that this works is we've got a matrix object which populates matrices, and each one of these matrices represents a cloud cluster, and it does it along this n-sided spline. So if you go to the n-sided spline, you can actually change this manually if you want to. And you can make that like a uh, single line, or you can make it squares, pentagons, or whatever, but I think triangles are pretty useful. So leave it there. And whatever you do, don't turn this cloner off because if you disable this cloner, it will actually break the Espresso. I'm just going to do that right now. So if you have put some time into making a preset and you accidentally break it, um, let's just do this right now. Okay, so you can see now that this matrix object now is undefined. And you can't do an undo um, to fix this. It's just, it's just completely broken. So uh, take this matrix object and drag it into the Espresso and just find the count function under object properties count and then reconnect the noodle to count and then you can delete this whole thing and it'll be back to normal so, but it's obviously better to not break it in the first place but I don't know it's a max on thing can't tell you why uh, that happens but just don't turn the cloner off so at any rate the cloner populates the sky with these these triangles and so if you go into the rig and you can you can see these uh, cluster groups expanding over the sky and that gives you more or less you know partly cloudy like heavily cloudy skies and then when you go into the cloud coverage uh, that increases the matrices that are populated along the um, polygon or it's, well, I guess it's the spline so if you want to see what that does you have to rewind it. I mean, you might have to even rewind it twice to make sure that the updates take effect. But now you can see that each one of these triangles only has one matrix or one cloud cluster per cluster group. So the triangle is the cluster group. And if you want to add more, we'll just add, say, three or four. And just rewind it to make sure that it's updated. And now you can count them. It's got four clusters per cluster group. So 
if you go into the cluster group size, you can actually, you know, shrink these down and that'll make the clusters, you know, tighter together or further apart. Um, so you can control the cluster group size that way. And again, if you want to see the preview, uh, you're going to have to go to shape and turn on the preview. And that'll give you a kind of a rough approximation of what this is going to look like. It's not perfect because the cluster groups or the preview groups are really big compared to what you're going to actually see. So they're always a lot larger than the actual render. But go back into Easy Cloud, and if you want to just get a quick look, see, um, why don't you up this uh, step size to something larger, like maybe 4,000? It's very low resolution. And the other thing, too, thinking particles don't really give you an accurate render in the pr preview render. Um, you can do a preview render, but the ultimate end result really probably will look different in the actual renderer. So let's see what this looks like with a, uh, a sky background. And go into the browser. Let's add the clear sky. And one of the things you, you may notice is that uh, when you add one of these volumetric presets, it comes in from another scene file that it's kind of a little bit hard to explain, but we can't actually make this loadable from the content browser because it'll wipe out the thinking particle group. It'll just erase it. It won't retain it in the LIB4D file. So it actually brings it in from um, a different method. So it uh, it's one of those things where you're going to have to add your sky to the cloud scene instead of the the clouds to your scene, just FYI. So uh, let's do another render and see what these look like. Okay. So now that's a pretty, you know, that's a pretty low resolution render and it was fast. So let's uh, reduce the step size to like 2000 and let's um, make these scaled higher on the Y, give them a little bit more vertical scale and just render that and see what they look like. Okay, it's starting to look a little bit more cloudy, like real clouds. And let's just put the, um, just for the fun of it, let's make the uh, group size a little bit smaller and just see what happens. Rewind it. And let's make the cluster size bigger. Now the cluster is the pyro cluster puffball, if you will. And usually if you're making a large cluster, you're going to want to have large noise scale. That gives the cluster a more irregular look. Uh, you know, finer detail in your procedural noise will give you more detail, but it tends to make the uh, clusters more spherical. So just keep that in mind. And let's um, rewind that and do another render and see what happens. Okay, so it's a little, it's taking a little bit longer, but you're getting more detail in your uh, clusters and anyway that's basically easy cloud 1.3 super easy to use pretty straightforward and we have another thing which is a cloud light and we have pyro cluster illumination turned on so if you use that you can actually make your clouds pick up the kind of light that your sunset is emitting and there the, the display tag is to only illuminate the cloud so you can adjust your clouds that way that is pretty much the bulk of easy cloud 1.3 without going over any of the other presets but this this product really i think is really the bomb and i think it's the best thing out there for making clouds in cinema 4d if you have easy cloud uh 1.2 this is going to be a super cheap update for you upgrade and if you don't have it I highly recommend you get this thing and play with it. It's going to be a lot of fun. So thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you at the depot. Bye now.